name's Tony from Spark, part of the Tudor Group. Um, and we recently launched the new Black Box 3 with Multispark. Um, and over the last few months, we've been getting a few questions and quite a few relating to the Pragable Vacuum Advance. Now, one question that comes up quite a lot is, well, do I even need a Vacuum Advance? Absolutely, yes. I can't think of any circumstance where a car isn't going to run better with a Vacuum Advance than without. Now, you've got to remember, this is not one of those old rubber diaphragms stuck on the side of a distributor. This just goes backwards and forwards and does very little. That's if it even works. This is a fully programmable vacuum advance. If you can imagine your normal distributor advance, it's just a linear line. Um, it runs off two advanced springs, a primary and a secondary. So that's why you get that kind of dog leg. Um, and it's just a linear line relating to RPM. Higher RPM, the more advanced. The vacuum control adds a third dimension to it. You then get load. High load when you're under full throttle, wide open throttle, no load with throttle closed. Um, it gives you so much uh, choice on how you want to set your car up that it just would be ludicrous to suggest that you don't need it. Um, the next sort of thing that comes up is, well, I've got a race car or a track car. It's got a big Weber car, but it doesn't really produce vacuum. Nonsense, absolute nonsense. So I just want to quickly show you our, uh, our staff car. You can see fast road uh, cam, stage two head, twin choke Weber, sports exhaust. That's on top of all the suspension lowering and the rest of it. Um, the vacuum advance has transformed the way this car ticks over. Um, it would be ridiculous to say that it, it's not worth having. Um, it's so easy to fit. Um, so the, all you have to do, say on a car like this with the Webbers, you just, if you've got no vacuum, I mean a lot of cars have already got a vacuum takeoff, so you just got to unplug it from the distributor and plug it into the black box. Um, all you have to do is, if you, have, if you don't have a vacuum, is drill a hole, tap it, put a little takeoff in, put the vacuum hose in, run it to the black box. You don't need to know how to set it up because it almost sets itself up. It's so simple. Um, it's got an internal vacuum gauge, so you can get your, you can get your vacuum tick over. You can program it as easy as anything, and it will, like I said before, it will transform the way your car ticks over. And if it was just for that, if it only did that, it would be worth the two hundred pounds. But it has so many other features on top of that. Um, so I think really the next thing is I'm just going to demonstrate how to set the vacuum. I'm just going to show you how simple it is, and hopefully. You'll be sold. Okay, so we're sitting in the car now. Um, and I think before we just go through all the functions on the vacuum, I just want to do a quick demonstration on the uh, the vacuum uh, at Tickover. Um, bearing in mind, this is a, a fairly tuned car, stage two head, uh, high lift cam, big Weber, sports exhaust, etc. Um, these cars are notoriously hard to get to tick over smoothly. So uh, if we can get this car to tick over smoothly, we can pretty much get any car to tick over smoothly. So I think really the first thing to do is just start up and, uh, and just have a bit of a listen. Okay, so for this demonstration, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start the car up, give it a quick rev, let it settle, and then what we'll do is we'll pinch the vacuum hose and just see what sort of difference that makes and let go again um, and do that maybe a couple of times and then we'll see exactly what's, uh, what's going on. So first thing to do, let's just start her up. <laughs> I let it settle. So it's settling down around the 900 mark, a bit under eight. So we're seeing sort of in the eight in the 800s. So I'm doing nothing but just pinch that quickly, and immediately you can hear it's just going to choke up. Let go, comes back to life. Let pinch it. Back to life, and you'll notice here it, we've got a display showing the vacuum. Uh, sorry, the vacuum advance there, and the total advance here. And if you just take a note when I pinch it, that this will drop to ten because that's our initial advance, and that will uh, drop to zero. See, so we've got no vacuum. That would be just standard initial advance. Put that back on, and the car immediately picks up and ticks over a lot smoother. So we've already seen how the car ticks over quite nicely at around about 850 RPM. 
The only other bit of information we're going to really need uh, to set the vacuum advance up is to know how much pressure or vacuum it's uh, pulling. So to do that, we can use the internal vacuum gauge. We do need to start her up. So we'll start the car up. And let me just, on the black box three, we can use the little shortcut to the vacuum settings, which is that one. Um, that's the first window. We just keep scrolling through until we get to the vacuum gauge. So that's now telling us, uh, you can see here, sensor reading, 11. So that's how much vacuum there is on this setup at tick over. So as I gently rev it up, it'll drop down usually to around or close to zero. It, sometimes it goes up higher than uh, 11 or 12 on the overrun. Um, but basically we're working from figures from around about 12 to zero. So the next thing really is to start the setup. Okay, so we've got all the information we need. Um, I've gone back to ignition off because I do like to start right back from the beginning so there's no confusion of where we are in the menus. So uh, to start the setup, ignition on. You have on black box three, you have the, the, uh, the shortcut that takes us straight to the uh, vacuum controls. Um, on black box two, you'll have to use the positive to scroll right through. First window, minimum vacuum pressure. So uh, what is that? That is uh, the minimum vacuum that the vacuum advance is going to start working at. So we know that uh, it's, it's got pretty much full vacuum at tick over, which we know is around about 11, 12. And a wide open throttle, the vacuum is going to be its lowest, around about 0, 1, 2, something like that. So this really needs to be somewhere in between the two. So obviously around about 6. Um, next window. That's the vacuum max pressure. So that's gonna be the maximum uh, vacuum that we want our uh, vacuum advance to be working at. And our sort of working range is between wide open throttle and tick over. So um, we know at tick over it's, it's drawing about 11, 12. So the maximum is for this is gonna be 12. Um, I think really maybe 13 would be better, just, just slightly over what we know it normally ticks over at, so we're just going to change that to 13. Uh, so the next screen is the uh, vacuum advance maximum. So that's the maximum advance we're going to be getting at the maximum vacuum. So we set maximum vacuum at 13, so at 13 inches mercury we'll be getting 16 degrees. Um, and at six, which we've set as our minimum, we're going to be getting zero degrees. So we've got a linear curve between six inches of mercury and 13 inches of mercury. Um, that's about it. Um, the next window really now, we just have to scroll past the boost settings, which are not relevant for this, until we come to this window here or this screen, vacuum advance start RPM. So this is where, uh, what if what RPM you want your vacuum advance to start at. So if you didn't want it to work at, vac at uh, tick over, you would set this figure above tick over. So if I just, um, let's push this right up to say a thousand. Okay, so any tick over under a thousand, the vacuum advance is not gonna work. So let's just see what happens. So let's start the car up. So it's ticking over, it's, it's, it's going to choke up, but let's just see what happens if I start reducing this figure. So now you can hear, or you can see, or you can see and hear, the vacuum's cut in, and the car's ticking over quite a bit smoother. If I increase this up again, immediately it's going to, it's going to choke and stall. Just reduce it again. So what this means is if you want to have the vacuum advance working at tick over, you can. If you don't want the vacuum at uh, tick over, you don't have to have it. And you can have any advance you want at tick over. Um, so that's when I was talking about how versatile it is. That's kind of 
something you simply could not do with the old-fashioned... Uh... Um, I hope that's given you a little insight into the black box vacuum programmable control, how to set it up and how easy it is to set up. Um, and just remind you that, of course, is just a secondary feature, the primary feature obviously being the main advanced control. Um, and along with the vacuum control, other secondary features include programmable rev limiter, um, and you can program that from uh, hard to soft. It has a programmable boost function. You can use that on uh, on superchargers. Um, you can use the multi-spark function on uh, start or have that on start and run. You can program your coil saturation time. And I think all these features put together makes this by far the most comprehensive ignition control package in the UK at the moment. Um, I'd just like to give you some brief final thoughts. Um, Obviously we have competitors, um, we, have, uh, we have all of Amethyst. Now that retails at 240 pounds, requires a laptop connection, but I believe it has issues connecting to Windows 11, um, but I think it's always gonna have issues. Every time there's a Windows update, you're gonna have a problem. Um, and it doesn't have anywhere near the sort of features that ours has. You have MSD, again, the one we had, um, had a laptop connection, it might be on Bluetooth now, I'm not sure. Incredibly complex to, uh, complex to set up, so good luck with that one. <laughs> Um, but 500 pounds, um, you have uh, one, two, three, really good product, well made, but I think the programmable version is 500 pound plus, maybe six, um, and it's specific to the car. So you have to have the right distributor for the car, unlike ours, will fit any car. Um, so I think, I, genuinely, I think ours is the best. It has all the features of all the others put together, um, and it's cheaper than any of them. And our jewel in the crown, so to speak, is the fact that ours is completely UK designed. It's completely built in the UK and it's sold in the UK. So I would hope that after you've, uh, you've listened to you know, what I've said and uh, ramble on a little bit, that you would consider supporting a UK business um, that's, gonna, that's gonna give you a product, that's gonna give you immense amount of pleasure out of getting you the best out of your classic car and gonna give you many years of happy motoring. So with that, I'm just going to sign off. Thank you very much. And I hope to see you as a customer. Bye.